Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times, in the Point Lonesome Swamp, on this gorgeous Friday, it is March 12th, 2021. So anyway guys, this could be it. Uh, after having the single healthiest year of my entire life in 2020, uh, I feel like shit today. This is the first day I have been sick in like three years. Got the sore throat. I mean like every hour I am going down. So this could be it. Ambone could have the corona panic. So I figure, well, alright, if the, if the wolf outside the cave door has finally bitten me on the ass, I better get out one more corona panic Roundup before I uh, before I head to a refrigerated truck. You know how Florida is full of all of these refrigerated trucks. So maybe I will finally get a ride on one. So you know I, I was just listening to uh, I, I mean about an hour ago on NPR on the Florida NPR news. What they were talking about is 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 how hard it is. To get vaccines, uh, Corona panic vaccines in the state of Florida. I mean, interviewing all of these people about how complicated it is and chasing down your vaccine here and there, and and this is unbelievable, a red tape and bullshit that people in Florida are, are you know trying to get this vaccine so they don't end up feeling like I feel today, and. Uh, <clears throat> So here is my story, and I'm sticking to it. So today was Florida. It's Florida. It's Friday, March. So it was Wednesday, Wednesday night, March 10th, and I might as well say, okay, I uh, I was in the Inverness, Florida, Winn Dixie supermarket. You know the big grocery store in Inverness, Florida. Just, just walked in, uh, you know, right before they close, and so I'm, uh, you know, I'm pushing my cart up and down. You know how they come over the PA and shit. So this guy comes over the PA. I wish to hell I had had a camera. And what he announces to the shoppers, you know, because they're getting ready to close, he goes, "Okay, folks, if you want one of these Corona Panic vaccines, come up front and get your free Corona Panic vaccine." He goes, "Otherwise." These are going in the garbage. So in Inverness, Florida, uh, they are throwing away Corona Panic vaccines at the Winn Dixie supermarket. And my guess is, uh, if, if I, I don't think this was a one-off, I think there's a hell of a lot more of these vaccines. Uh, going in the garbage. As far as I know, nobody in the store, uh, including yours truly, took the bait to get this free vaccine. I mean, anybody, anybody uh, hearing that uh, while they were grocery shopping could have walked up and, and gotten their Corona Panic vaccine. My guess is this shit went right in the garbage. And it was just a couple of weeks ago, I remember seeing these unbelievable traffic jams with cops uh, directing traffic, with the traffic backed up for miles and miles, with these panicked sheeple running out to get their vaccines. And now they're going in the garbage. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe I should have gotten my Corona Panic vaccine. We will see if I'm dead by tomorrow. Uh, so as long as we are uh, talking about uh, the C word, let's just look at a few of the things on uh, the mainstream media. I appreciate various Alert Tribes members sending me this. This was uh, a letter to the editor to the LA Times. Now, unfortunately, I am paywalled out of the LA Times so I cannot get into the uh, article they're referring to in this letter to the editor uh, you know from the Los Angeles California obviously we're talking about letters to the editor was Ron DeSantis 
Right. To the editor. Only one thing is worse than making a mistake, and that is failing to acknowledge it. California has simply not chosen the right path in handling the corona panic, while Florida has, and the Times fails to accept that fact. And so they refer you, this is a letter to this article, which I'm not from March 9th, I am, I can't get through the paywall. It was titled, California and Florida took vastly different approaches to the corona panic. Here is how it turned out. Okay, so back to the letter. Uh, by choosing to focus on a few data points, probably meaning the total number of people who have died, I'm guessing, by choosing to focus on a few data points, which is another way of saying by choosing to ignore a bunch of data points, the Times misses the point that Florida's refusal to crater its economy for the sake of appearances was the better path. The death rates quoted in the article and expressed <coughs> in percentages are really quite close. Finally, uh, we have, uh, when you look at the mortality rate, the death rate, this is how many people in, in the whole goddamn state have died of this thing. California versus uh, versus Florida, you know. So California, the you know, with the lefties over there, uh, you, you know, just in, in these unbelievable uh, draconian lockdowns, mask man, all of the other shit. And here is here is Florida on the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay, <clears throat> with the possible exception, I guess, of South Dakota, Florida has the most lax, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis and all of this. Okay, the death rates quoted in the article in, a, in LA Times and expressed in percentages are really quite close. Okay, what percent of California's population has died from the corona panic? If your guess was 0.1385% of Californians have died from corona panic, give yourself a gold star. So, and another, instead of 0.1385, we'll call that 0.14, that means 0.14, that 99. 6%, I think my math is right, 99.86% of Californians have not died of corona panic and 0.1385% have. So that sounds like great evidence for these, you know, all of this uh, heavy-handed um, uh, Nazi approach to this. Okay, what is your figures for Florida? Okay. Florida does have a higher percentage. How about looking at the same statistic for Florida, we find 0.1538% of Floridians have died of corona panic. So instead of 99.8% uh, Eight six percent of people not dying of corona panic, we have 99.84 percent. We're talking the difference between California's and Florida's death rate. This is how many people have died of this thing. Okay, uh, the difference is 0.02 percent there this is statistically uh, what's that word they always use statistically insignificant they're pretty much identical 
okay, 0.02% interest. All right, having lost a friend to the corona panic, I know that each individual death is tragic, but using gross numbers expressed in deaths per million masks, I love that word, masks the relatively small difference nothing relatively, the, the tiny uh, difference and unfairly plays on our individual emotions. Also, according to the U.S. Census, only 14.8% of California's population is in the highest risk over 65 age group while Florida, on the other hand, has 20.9% in that category. Still, Florida's death rate is not much higher than California. So, what they're saying here correctly, if you factored, it, if you factored that in, there is no difference. Doing the math, doing the math, it is easy to see that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was right and California Governor Gavin Newsom was wrong. Thank you, Brother Richard Ayub from Glendale, California, and good for the LA Times for publishing this and Yahoo News uh, for running it. I will probably have this video pulled down and get my second strike from reading an, a letter to the editor. Guys, at what point are we going to pull our fucking heads out of our asses? Uh, you know, and, and like me, and, and die of corona panic before you get a free vaccine before it goes in the garbage uh, at the grocery store. All right, next. Wow, imagine this. This is, I think this was... Uh, from the Washington Post. And no, I can't, I, I don't remember who it was, but several versions of this. This is, okay, this is just Yahoo News' own coverage of this story, several versions of this. Six foot social distancing is not necessary in classrooms, new study says. Having students sit six feet apart in classrooms as opposed to three feet offers no greater protection against the corona panic, according to a major new study whose findings come as schools across the U.S. struggle to reopen amid debates over safety. President Biden has made bringing students back into classrooms a priority. The debate over classroom spacing is complicating those efforts. With these new findings, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention may come under pressure to revise its guidelines, which currently call for six feet of spacing in most situations. This is uh, Emily Oster, a professor of economics at Brown University who has written on the damage caused by keeping schools closed and has tracked reopening efforts across the country. Quote, <clears throat> the current CDC guidance six foot distancing is quote, very physically restraining for a lot of districts. If our goal is a state of normalcy, there are a lot of districts where you just can't do that with six feet. Many, many more places would have no problem opening if they could do three feet. And then it uh, breaks uh, this all down. The study also found, quote, no significant difference in corona panic infection rates for either children or adults between the two classroom configurations. That means the researchers concluded, quote, lower physical distancing policies 
can be adopted in school settings with masking mandates without negatively impacting student or staff safety. But of course, they're, they're still calling for, a, you know, for all these school children to wear these masks. You know, the last rant I did, you know, talking about that less than 0.2% of the deaths in, in this country, which I think I, I, I haven't done my percentage calculator, uh, it is less than 1,000 uh, of, of every human being in this country that has died of corona panic has been under the age of 18. And, uh, and, and they're still, even in this, talking about uh, because less than 0.2% of the total deaths are school-aged children that uh, we need to wrap face diapers uh, around whatever it is, 50 million little kids uh, because, uh, b b because 10 of them might die from corona panic. You know, it's time to pull our heads out of our asses, people. Uh, but one more. Now, this one was from the Washington Post. <clears throat> Here are the people who love wearing masks, and not just because they want to avoid corona panic. Yes. A year into the pandemic, a lot has changed, and we are reminded of that every time we go outside. If we go outside, masks, masks have joined the traditional don't leave home without them trifecta. What is the don't leave home without them trifecta, now a quadrifecta? Keys, wallet, and cell phone. And they, meaning masks, are here to stay. There are folks who hate masks, who cannot breathe through them, or who think they are a sign of political oppression. But for others, the widespread use of masks has made the past year one of liberation. With a mask, you can sing in the grocery store, <coughs> talk to yourself on a walk, since you can't talk to anybody else, Grimace in the gym, leave that spinach in your teeth, have coffee breath, forget lipstick, and no one is the wiser. Oh, the savings on Altoids and L'Oreal this past year. Yes, folks on social media write little odes, little odes to the masked life. Quote, I love wearing a mask. I want to do this forever. It has helped my social anxiety so much. How about wearing a mask is really letting me be ugly in peace. I love it here, meaning inside the mask. Now, masks for ugly people, I, I'm, I'm okay with ugly people wearing masks. You know, it, 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 if we don't have to look at your fat, clueless, fucking ugly face, fine, wear a goddamn mask. But, you know, one of the true crimes is all of these beautiful young women whose faces you can't see. You can't have blowjob fantasies. Uh, you know, what's a poor 60-year-old man to do uh, with all of these, uh, you know, women half his age? Uh, wearing wearing masks, you know the whole blowjob fantasy thing gone out the window. Uh, how about one librarian, much loved by local kids on the west coast, said she loves being able to go do errands without being recognized by her tiny fans. Amid half a million lives lost, financial ruin, and social devastation that the corona panic has wrought, 
there are teeny tiny glimmers of good things this cruel virus has left us. The normalized use of masks is one of them. Yes, the normalized use of masks, according to the Washington Post, is one of the teeny tiny glimmers of good things this cruel virus has left us. Quote, this is Donna Bauer from Orlando, Florida. Huh. I don't think I could ever go back to not wearing a mask. Hmm. Masks hide the laugh lines, so why not run with it? Uh, oh, she continues, I like not catching colds, not wearing makeup, and not being noticed. So even vaccinated and with herd immunity, I am still going to be hiding behind it. Yes, it is a familiar sentiment as we mark a year into the global pandemic. My own 16-year-old son made me think about this. Yes, he is a teen who comes with all the familiar afflictions of his gender and age. That misanthropic streak that makes him roll his eyes when I am chit-chatting with store clerks. He is a polite and well-spoken kid when he has to be, but I did not consider that social graces are not easy for him. So this is what her 16-year-old son told Petunia, her name is Petunia, uh, gave her the idea for this article, quoting her 16-year-old son, I want to keep wearing a mask after this is over. I can just go and do my thing, and I don't have to interact with people. It is liberating! Sixteen-year-olds do not have to interact with their fellow humans, and it is liberating. And uh, the kid's mother is cheering on her her own sixteen-year-old for wearing a mask, so he does not have to interact with his fellow humans. The Washington Post cheering on uh, this clueless fucking bimbo, and we wonder why we are so fucked. Anyway, guys, now that uh, I have finished with this Corona Panic Roundup rant, I guess I better run to, uh, run to the store and get myself a jug of vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, maybe some zinc, uh, may, oh, some heartworm pills. I'm going to go eat Sancho Panza's heartworm pills. Uh, anyway, it's been nice knowing you. I've been enjoying doing these Corona Panic rants. And uh, make no, I mean, all kidding aside, there are a lot of people listening to this rant right now praying that I really do have Corona Panic, who really hope that I die of Corona Panic including former friends of mine, probably some present friends of mine, are hoping I really do have this shit and will be dead within the week. So, uh, Sancho Panza might be up for adoption in a few days. So, uh, which one of the tribe's members do you want to live with? So, anybody who wants to inherit Sancho Panza after I die of corona panic, you better send me a, an email quick and get your name in on the Sancho Panza dead ham bone list. Get out there and uh, get your vitamin D, I guess, while you still can. And get to Winn-Dixie in uh, Inverness, Florida and get your free corona panic vaccine before they throw it in the garbage. Bye, guys. Oh, yes, now we got to go over to 
Collapse Chronicles and do the ecological meltdown roundup rant, but you have to go over there to find that. Bye, guys.